in the previous lesson, what we did was introduce the basic writings, the basic ideas and contributions to medieval philosophy of Jewish theologian Maimonides. We specifically focused on the nature of God, the sort of more metaphysical conceptions of God, as well as the influences that Maimonides was essentially inspired by people like Aristotle and the ways in which he sought to reconcile the nature of Jewish theology and, and belief in, in, in a Jewish uh, doctrine of, 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 of religion with basic principles of logic and rationality as elucidated by some of the ancient philosophers. This lesson is going to show you how this is illustrative of his broader theological contributions, uh, namely in this video specifically looking at the problem of evil and the way in which he incorporates some of the ancient philosophies of Aristotle with that of the sort of more modern conceptions of the problem of evil, at least modern according to him, uh, and, and the, the problem that the problem of evil essentially faces and the ways in which he tr seeks to try and address the problem of evil in this video. So we have to think about the problem of evil and Maimonides has to think about the problem of evil because it is central to his philosophical exploration of a number of different ideas. It is central to his exploration of divine justice, to his exploration of human suffering, and also to his exploration of God as and the nature of God as a benevolent being, as a being that is all loving. We know already, and you would probably be remiss to understand already, that his approach is heavily influenced by that of Aristotelian philosophy. Uh, it is influenced by Jewish theology, and it is also influenced by a commitment to rational inquiry. The reconciliation of the existence of evil with an omnipotent, omnibenevolent God is attempted in his work, The Guide for the Perplexed. Now, the basic idea of the existence of evil in conjunction with the existence of an omnipotent and omnibenevolent God is sometimes known as the inconsistent triad. The idea here is that you have three things to be true that seemingly contradict each other. So if God exists, and God exists in the way that a Judeo-Christian understanding of God exists, or just even an Abrahamic religion uh, conception of God exists, then God is all-powerful, and God is all-loving. He loves us infinitely, and he has the power to do anything he so chooses. There also exists evil in the world. There are natural disasters, there are dictators, there are murderers, there are all kinds of horrific things that takes place, there's suffering in the world. Now according to the inconsistent triad, it doesn't seem to be particularly convincing that these three things can all exist and then not be a contradiction. Because if evil exists, which we could probably understand, then surely a god that is omnipotent and, om and, all and omnibenevolent would seek to, because he loves us, end that evil, to end that suffering. And because he's all-powerful, he can do so. He can end suffering at the drop of a hat. So how can this exist? Either evil doesn't exist and God exists. That doesn't seem to be particularly convincing. Either evil does exist, but God is not able to prevent it, i.e. he's not omnipotent. Well, that seems to contradict and challenge some of the basic tenets of, of, of Christian and, and Jewish theology and, and, and doctrine. Or God is all-powerful, evil does exist, and God is not omnibenevolent. He doesn't love us. He doesn't, he's not all-loving. That, again, also contradicts basic tenets of, of, of theology. So you have to hold all three of these principles together. You have to hold the principle that God is omnipotent, God is omnibenevolent, and evil exists. And this is what theodicy is essentially a, a study to try and attempt. A theodicy is an attempt to try and reconcile these three contradictory features. Why is it the case that God is all-powerful and all-loving, but evil still exists? That is what a, theod a theodicy attempts to try and do.
And what Maimonides attempts to do is reconcile these three concepts in a theodicy by both categorizing evil, by exploring the causes of evil, and discussing the human perspective on suffering and the nature of justice. And he begins by categorizing evil. Now, Maimonides divides evil into three main categories. Now, these some of which may contradict the basic nature of the inconsistent triad, some of which may not contradict that basic nature. So the first category of evil he describes as natural evil. These are natural disasters, these are diseases, and th these are all the kinds of things that are not caused by humans. So when a an earthquake happens and kills 10,000 people, that's not obviously something that humans are able to control. That's not even anything that humans are able to predict. We can sort of predict volcanoes, but we can't really predict um, uh, we can't really predict earthquakes, which is a, a, a terrible thing in and of itself. For Maimonides, these are not direct acts of God against humanity. They are instead part of the natural order of the universe. Again, this does kind of contradict the nature of the inconsistent triad because surely even if they are a natural part of the universe and they are not direct acts of God against humanity, God can still nevertheless prevent them. He's all knowing, he's all powerful and he is all loving. So surely he could do that. Well, Maimonides argues that natural evils result from the material nature of existence and they are part of the world that is on the whole a good world. Now, notice here the word material and the, the idea of material nature of existence. You can sort of see, for those of you who have read Aristotle and for those of you who have studied our lessons on Aristotle, you can sort of see the influences already start to be imbued within this nature of theology. Um, the idea of the material world and the, the imperfections of the material world and the, and the different causes of, of all things, um, the material cause of things and all this kind of stuff. That's all um, influenced by Aristotle, so just bear that in mind. The second category of evil is moral evil, and this refers to evil actions and choices that are made by humans. So murdering people, uh, dictators, genocide, war crimes, all these different kind of horrific uh, acts of suffering that are caused by other people. Maimonides argues that this type of evil exists primarily as the result of human free will. Humans are free to do so um, because God might have the power to stop us, God might love us and want to stop us, uh, but it still nevertheless is the case that God gave us free will, and so in doing so, uh, he cannot stop us from, from, or at least he chooses not to stop us from committing acts of evil against each other. Now, you will obviously be able to challenge the perspective of free will if you are a philosopher or a particularly ardent atheist who wants to uh, who wants to bring about that challenge and you could argue that well if god is all knowing and he knows everything that we're going to do how is it the case that we have the action free will to do that anyway if it's already predetermined by god then surely we don't have any free will uh, and obviously you can think back and forth about that particular issue God gave humans the ability to choose between good and evil, and so moral evils are the result of individuals essentially misusing their ability to have freedom. This misuse of free will reflects a nature of humanity that is imperfect rather than any kind of flaw in divine creation. For Maimonides, there is also a third category of evil. This is sometimes known as pri privation or privation. This is not necessarily something that we can explicitly define or, sh or, or show, should I say. So like an earthquake is a natural evil or a murderer is a, is a moral evil. But rather privation is a category of evil which is simply just the absence of good or a lack of good. Just like a shadow is the absence of light. He argues that we perceive evil, uh, what, what we perceive as evil, should I say, is often just a lack of good rather than a direct positive infliction of harm. So, uh, for example, poverty is a type of evil, according to Maimonides, but poverty is just caused by the absence of wealth. Ignorance is caused by the absence of knowledge. This type of evil doesn't involve any kind of malicious intent, doesn't involve any kind of malicious action, but it just arises out of the fact that the world that we live in is a complex system. And there is the idea of absence, because in order to understand the 
these the sort of positive aspect of something in order to understand what wealth is you have to have an absence of wealth as well just like in order to understand light and to see light you have to be able to compare light against darkness against an area where there is no light otherwise um, you wouldn't be able to see light if everything was just the same uh, the same tone of brightness then nothing could ever be seen just like if everything was the exact same amount of wealth then you wouldn't really be able to appreciate wealth it's only when you see an absence of wealth that you appreciate the value of wealth or the absence of knowledge and ignorance all this kind of stuff so that's how he categorizes the nature of evil. I want to just spend a bit more time thinking about this Aristotelian concept, the Aristotelian concept of uh, the consequence of matter, if you will. Um, this is where Maimonides posits that humans, what humans perceive as evil, results from an inherent limitation of physical matter. Physical bodies, for example, are subjected to decay, they are subjected to disease, they are subjected to death. This is a certain degree of vulnerability, of physicality, and is not inherently evil, but rather is the result of the natural consequence of material existence. Link this to your understanding of Aristotle. This aligns with Aristotelian philosophy, wherein when we look at Aristotelian philosophy, the world is seen as having an inherent imperfection due to its material nature. Remember the four causes, the material cause, the final cause. These are all part of the, a broader conception of, of Aristotle's metaphysics and, and Aristotle's understanding of the universe and the, and the nature of the material world. Maimonides argues that because human beings have physical bodies, they have to necessarily be subjected to the limitations of the material world, because physical bodies, bodies are, of course, material. And so they are limited by the inherent uh, vulnerabilities of the material world. This means that they have to, therefore, be subjected to suffering and to limitations. And you can sort of understand where this comes from. If you think of old age, for example, or you think of disease as the result of old age, that is an example of a physical body being in a state of suffering. And that is because of the inherent nature of physical bodies as being subjected to decay, to disease and to death as part of our natural consequence of being in the material world and having material existence. For Maimonides, these aren't seen as punishments necessarily from God, but they're just a consequence of existing in a physical and imperfect world. Take us back then to the nature of moral evil then. Let's not think about decay or privation of, 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 of good or, or natural evils. Think instead about the moral evils that we've thought about. The idea of a murderer, the idea of a dictator or someone who is committing genocide or war crimes or anything like that. How does Maimonides explain this? Well, I've already briefly noted that part of this theodicy here is the concept of free will and human free will. And this is again part of the inconsistent triad. How can an all-powerful, all all-loving God allow for evil to exist? Now let's just replace that inconsistent triad by replacing evil with a specific type of evil. The idea of moral evil, the idea of murderers, okay? Or the idea of anybody who does and an, an commits an immoral act. How can we reconcile these things together? How can we reconcile the idea of a moral evil existing in the world with an, an all-loving and all-powerful God. Well, according to Maimonides' theodicy, this is explained through the concept of free will. He believes that God's granting of free will to humanity is a fundamental good and is a representation not only of his om omnipotence, because he's able to grant free will to anybody and, any, and anything, but also to his omnibenevolence. He is able to grant free will to humanity, and this granting of free will is a fundamental good. It allows humans to develop virtues and to develop moral responsibility. And from that idea, evil choices and actions will stem out of the misuse of freedom, not from the divine will. People are responsible for moral evil because they do so by creating it through their own actions, through their own individual choices. God will not intervene in every individual's choices because doing so would compromise human freedom. Simple as that. He gave us free will under his basic 
tenants as an omnipotent being. He gave us free will, as, and this is a fundamentally good thing, hence why we see his uh, sort of representation of his omnibenevolence. And so to intervene in every single individual's actions, in, in, in order to, to essentially intervene in, in immoral actions, will compromise that basic tenet of free will. This is a necessary development for virtues like justice and courage and wisdom. Remember as well, noting back to Aristotle and Aristotelian philosophy here, virtues. He's sort of he's talking about basic virtues and basic ideas of normative principle, of normative ethics here. Virtues like justice and courage and wisdom are all Aristotelian ideas. For Maimonides, the idea of divine justice is quite complex. It is suggested that God's justice does not necessarily align with human standards and that human suffering could be often misunderstood as an unjust settlement of the world. He suggests here that where you just don't understand why a particular type of moral evil is allowed to happen, according to Maimonides, it's just because you don't understand the nature of divine justice. It's too complex for your understanding. God's wisdom and purpose are beyond human comprehension. So they do not, uh, you do not get to understand, basically, uh, why seemingly unjust and inexplicable things take place in a world that is existing where you have a problem um, such as the inconsistent triad. According to, according to Maimonides, where you see examples of clearly um, destructive suffering and clearly immoral acts taking place, and you think, well, how can this be just in any meaningful way? Maimonides' response is a little bit of a cop-out in my opinion, but Maimonides' response is, well, you don't get to understand God's wisdom. You don't get to understand human, uh, human, ba a basic human understanding of justice is beyond the comprehension of that of the divine justice of God. And so you might think this is uh, evil or you might think that this is evidence of the lack of God, but it is not. It is just evidence that you don't quite understand the basic ideas of divine justice.